the United States deficit has soared 23% and you still want to hold on to sovereign bonds? Let's talk about it all. Let's see how we can protect ourselves. Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for leaving your comments below, for subscribing, it is truly important, and also for giving a like to this video. Uh, we really appreciate it. The United States fiscal deficit has soared 23% by more than $320 billion to almost $1.8 trillion of deficit. This in a year of high growth, low unemployment and huge recovery of the economy. Which goes to show yet again that the fiscal deficit and the monster debt of the United States has absolutely nothing to do with revenues because the lower tax revenues come precisely from the bloated government spending and the increase in taxes. Uh, furthermore, it is very important to understand that it does not even matter. There is no tax revenue measure that would have generated additional tax receipts of 1.7 trillion in a year like this, let alone uh, going forward and in a constant level. The United States administration itself predicts that between 2023 and 2032, the accumulated deficit will be around $14 trillion. This obviously is a very optimistic calculation given what we have just seen is that despite the debt ceiling negotiations, despite the shutdown of the government and its risk, the reality is that the government continues to spend massively above tax receipts not only dramatically above tax receipts, but also dramatically above what it should. Because let's remember the Biden administration massively increased spending in a year in which there was no need for such a bloated level of government spending. It's very important to understand this. There is no single tax revenue measure that can bring the deficit to zero, let alone reduce the $33.6 trillion of debt of the United States. None whatsoever. Why? If you decide to increase taxes as the administration did, and at the same time, increase massively spending, the reality is that tax receipts are cyclical. And in periods of slowdown, tax receipts will fall even in a growth economy. Yet, government spending is annualized and it's consolidated. What happened with reducing the extraordinary expenditures of COVID-19? Gone. The uh, administration decided to increase government spending massively with the idea that this would generate high growth and the Keynesian multiplier effect. There is no Keynesian multiplier whatsoever. Furthermore, and this is what's most important, is that if we look at the growth of GDP adjusted for the increase in debt, the United States GDP right now adjusted for that increase in debt is at the worst level since 1929. The worst level since 1929. Think about it. A deficit of more than 6% of GDP for an economy that is barely growing 2%. This is insanity. This is insanity. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, what we see is that the US Treasury yield is going up that the risk in sovereign bonds is rising and that all of those governments that are implementing those so-called Keynesian policies are going through the same monetary debasement process that is hurting growth, that is hurting jobs, and it's certainly 
hurting real wages because this is what matters to you. What matters to you is not that unemployment levels are relatively low, which they are. By the way, the level of um, employment to population ratio as well as the labor participation rate remain below pre-pandemic levels. But that's another thing. What matters to you is real wages and real wages remain in negative territory since 2019. So this horrific policy of constantly increasing spending from the side of the government, even in a growth economy, and obviously always in a uh, recessionary economy, is disguising the reality of a recession. The United States is in a recession. If you adjust for the monster increase in public debt, which is bloating GDP, obviously the United States is in a recession, as you can see in the level of confidence from consumers, as you can see in the PMIs of the manufacturing sector, as you can see in the reality of tax receipts. Tax receipts are also weaker. All of those elements are showing us that the private sector is suffering and that GDP is being basically disguised by monster government spending. So, why do you hold government bonds in this environment? It makes no sense whatsoever. You think really that inflation is going to come down with governments spending a lot more with those anti-inflation measures that actually increase inflation and perpetuate it because it's more units of currency being consumed by the government? Mm -hmm. Obviously. The reality of inflation is that it is a monetary phenomenon. In this chart that Steve Hanker uh, created, he shows precisely that, that the correlation between money growth and inflation is undoubtable, undoubtable, and continues to be. So, more government spending, more deficit, more debt means lower growth, higher uh, inflation for longer, Furthermore, the risk of definitely stagflation. And if inflation starts to creep down, hmm, be aware of this. Real wages are already in negative territory of, uh, in the past five years. Therefore, the loss of purchasing power of, of salaries and of deposit savings will likely continue even with a reduced level of inflation in uh, 2024 because monetary aggregates are actually declining. Of course, pay attention to monetary aggregates. Hmm? So in this environment, what is happening? A number of things are very interesting. The dollar, gold and oil are going up, which means risk off in every strict sense. There's also something happening that I actually did not envision, to be fairly honest, which is that Bitcoin is actually working as an uncorrelated asset relative to equities and relative to the, uh, uh, the, the, the bond environment. Let's remember that Bitcoin reacted basically up and down with the Nasdaq and technology stocks, but now it seems to be uh, maintaining the support levels in an admirable way and at the same time breaking new resistance levels. We have to monitor whether this is a reality or this is only something that is happening short term. But certainly something is happening on the monetary spectrum that is changing the way in which investors look at the world. The first one is that the uh, combination of irresponsible fiscal policy, huge debt, huge deficit with low growth and governments that don't want to reduce their imbalances is leading to an environment of lack of trust in the fiat currencies. And we are seeing it, for example, in how uh, emerging economies, China and others are dumping treasuries at the fastest pace in years. Mm -hmm. This is very dangerous. This is very dangerous for a government in the United States that believes in the MMT fallacy, which is not modern, it's not monetary, and it's not a theory. MMT is simply science fiction economics based on something that has always been done, which is monetary debasement. It's extremely dangerous to put at risk the, uh, the US dollar as the world reserve currency. But the government is doing it, and it's doing it with an irresponsible one. 
there is no tax revenue measure that would reduce the deficit from the current 1.7 trillion to a to zero impossible let alone consistently two it is extremely dangerous to continue to consume more units of currency from the side of government because that means obviously that it will perpetuate high inflation even with monetary aggregates coming down third the situation of the United States is not of a high growth economy. It's of a bloated economy due to high debt. The reality is that debt adjusted GDP is at the worst situation since 1929. And finally, the most important thing is in that environment, you have to run away from sovereign bonds because what governments are going to do one way or another is to destroy the ability of savers to generate some returns out of the issued notes that they present to the public. Obviously, obviously, there is no other way. So this is a very dangerous situation. We will monitor it. I think that the move in Bitcoin is extremely interesting, but at the same time, gold, the dollar, oil, the entire market is showing us that there is too much complacency about inflation, too much complacency about growth, and certainly too much complacency about fiscal responsibility. Keep defending freedom. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, leave your comments below, and keep defending freedom. Thank you very much.